spent the whole weekend out of the box. Hard to not like what you saw from LSU and Jay Johnson. It was kind of everything that you had heard about from us, from anyone who covered the team, everything you've heard about from Jay Johnson himself in his various media availabilities. You kind of saw it all. I mean, that was as advertised, was it not? Yes. For the for the first weekend of I the season. So. And I understand it was Maine and they're not very good. Uh we kind of knew that going into it, but when you look at what LSU did in that three games, compare it to last year's three games, just previous opening weekends for LSU, other opening weekends around the league here where you have Florida dropping a two games a three game series to Liberty who's also not very good, and you look at what LSU did and put that in that context, it's hard to not be excited about what you saw. Because again, it was at, as advertised. There's plenty of places you can start, but you're going to start with the offense. That scored 51 runs. A new record at LSU for your opening week, and it bested the 96 team that scored 45 in a series against Western Kentucky. 51 runs. 5-1 Seven players are hitting 400 or better. Four of them are over 500. And Braden Joe Bear is hitting 667. LSU's hitting 388 as a club. That's ridiculous. Yes, that will regress to the mean, obviously. But to come out of three games right there, what's the most insane part of it all offensively? Have you gone to look at the SEC rankings since the first series wrapped up? LSU leads the conference by a lot <laughs> in batting average, slugging percentage, on base percentage, runs scored, hits, runs batted in, doubles, triples, home runs, total bases, total plate appearances, hit by pitch, sack fly. They lead the league in damn near every offensive category after one weekend. And yes, again, one weekend. But take that context that you're a top in everything. You set a record for runs scored. 51 runs on 45 hits. LSU scored 28, 27 runs on 28 hits last week, last season in their opener. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal start. And if you're questioning whether they can move the offense or whether they can hit one through nine, there's a couple holes. I mean, you, need a, you need a couple guys to pick it up a little bit, but seven guys at 400. Think about the second inning yesterday. The second inning yesterday this is the perfect example of what Jay Johnson talks about when he says moving the offense. I thought it would never end. <laughs> LSU, so did so did Maine. LSU hit five doubles in that inning, a triple and a triple. Five doubles and a triple. That's that's it's insane. It's it's insane. Hitting a baseball is hard, and LSU made it look very, very easy this weekend. I think uh, as advertised is the best way to put it, man, because like you said, it is Maine, and LSU's played a lot of teams that they're a lot better than and, you know, isn't really on the same standing as the Tigers are. But they've never scored 50-plus runs in one weekend. Like, regardless of who the competition is, that is amazing. And uh, on, in all the games, there are so many individual performances, and you can sit there and praise, but you ran through those stats, man. I mean, as Kay Doty w was up to bat, as Jacob Berry was up to bat, I was telling myself, we've talked about you guys all season. It's time to finally put it on the field and see what this team is made of against another opponent. And LSU did that as well as they possibly could have against Maine, at least hitting-wise. We'll talk a little bit about the pitching, but we talked so much about the offense. And, and what Jay Johnson was going to bring over. And we, we basically saw exactly we had, what we had been talking about the last few weeks and the last few months. Like everything came to fruition when it came to Jay, Jay Johnson and his offense. Both the guys that came back, Trey Morgan was awesome on Friday. He was awesome on Sunday. And then Jacob Berry from the first game gets an RBI, gets Trey Morgan home, then has the two home runs on Saturday. Like it, it was a, as good of a start to the Jay Johnson era as it possibly could have been. And it was an awesome atmosphere in the box. You were there all three days. I was just there on Friday, the weather was definitely not ideal, and Ooh. the crowd was maybe a little bit late arriving, but it eventually filled in, and it was an awesome atmosphere. I had to give props to the student section in particular. I really enjoyed the back and forth on Friday night with the LSU student section and the main right fielder, Jordan Schufland, who's all, who was also their Sunday uh, starting yeah, also, pitcher. Also, yep. uh, honestly, props to him. He, he, he went to Alex Box Stadium, and he reveled in the atmosphere. He was chirping with the fans. At first, Maine's Friday starter, Irwin, he was kind of dealing. He was yeah. playing really well against LSU in the beginning. But then Joe Bear hits the first home run over the, f the center fielder's head, and then the student session started letting uh, your boy Jordan Shuffland have it a little bit harder. I really enjoyed that. 
Really enjoyed the atmosphere inside of Alex Box and really enjoyed all the offense from Jay Johnson's crew. Yeah, the, the atmosphere was was really good all three games. Uh, those were those were some really good crowds, especially considering everything else that was going on around campus, whether it was the gym meet on Friday night or the women's basketball game on uh, on on Sunday, where both of those events had 11,000, 13,000 people in, in the in the PMAC for. So really, really solid crowds all weekend for LSU. Uh, I thought, you know, you mentioned Jacob Berry. I thought Jacob Berry was definitely as advertised. He uses the whole field extremely well. The two home runs that he hit on Saturday. I mean, the right fielder, your guy, Shufland, he didn't even he didn't even chase after one of them. He just sat there, turned, and watched it go over his head and and damn near to the top of the diamond deck out there in, in right field. Berry, as advertised. I thought Braden Joe Bear and Jack Merrifield really, really stood out. Now, obviously, if you're going to talk Joe Bear, you, you, that carries the caveat of Cade Beloso, and that just absolutely sucks yeah. for Cade Beloso. Uh, I mean, it, it's nice for LSU that you have a guy like Joe Bear who can fill in, but for Cade Beloso himself, the player, a guy who's been at LSU for a long time, has had struggles, was poised for a bounce-back season, was having arguably the best fall and spring of any player in the lineup, for him to go down in, a, in an accidental way as well pregame is is a tough one to take. I, Jay Johnson did not say he was out for the whole season, ruled it indefinitely. I would imagine if, if Beloso can play at some point this year, it's going to be a pain tolerance deal. Uh, it, it won't be anything that can, can actually be healed up in, until a, a surgery. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see with, with that. But I thought Joe Bear and, and uh, Jack Merrifield were very, very good for LSU. Merrifield, you saw a, a good bit here late in preseason, start to play that third base. And look, man, he plays a slick third base over there at the hot corner. Nothing got past him. He's got a strong, accurate arm from that side of the infield as well and just uses the middle of the field at the plate. A lot of line drives up the middle, ends up driving in four runs over the last two games of the series. He's hitting 400. Uh, and and here's son, just an aside. I love that he keeps his batting gloves in his back pocket when he's in the field because that's just old school and you don't see that very much anymore. And that just screams ball player, field rat, and I freaking love it. I think it's phenomenal and keep doing it because it's great. More people should do that. As a matter of fact, but he made a bid for that third base job. Now I think you'll see a lot of different combos, but when you you see him in there, he's going to compete. He's going to produce, and if he does it at that clip, it's going to be hard to keep him out of the lineup. For Braden Jobert's case, you can't keep that guy out of the lineup. He'll be in there somewhere. He he six one two fifteen fills out the uniform. Great, the power, the ball he hit Friday night. You mentioned it. the The wind was blowing in. Yeah. But the wind can be blowing in lazily. It wasn't at that point. Those flags were outstretched, and he stung the ball straight into the teeth of the wind, and it cleared the right center field fence with ease. If it's May or or April and the wind's blowing from the south out and it's hot, that ball might hit the right field scoreboard. LSU does that promotion where you hit the right field scoreboard, somebody wins something. Uh, Braden Joe Bear might have won somebody something had it been May or, or April. That ball was... Absolutely mash. So, yeah, offensively, K. Doty. Everybody awake now? Your everybody boy. everybody was sleeping on him? You awake? Your alarm clock went off? SEC Player of the Week, 12 RBI in three games, two homers, three doubles. You awake? Get used to it because that's happening a lot out of the four hole. That guy being able to hit behind Morgan, Barry, and Cruz, they're going to be on base a lot. He's going to have a lot of opportunity to drive in runs. Told you, it's going to potentially be an all-American season for K. Doty where he plays himself into the first round of the draft. That's how you start it off, right there. That backed up all the hype he's had this offseason. That lineup is so nasty. It's going to continue to be more nasty as Coach Jay continues to tinker with it. But like you said, all the firepower that you already had coming back, adding Jacob Barry to that, I think Doty's going to have an awesome season as well. What a start for him, especially after his performances on Friday and on Sunday. But when you start talking about LSU defensively, I think we had to highlight the performance of Blake Money on Friday night. He Let's was, go. I had to say it, Musso. He was money, money on Friday night. I mean, allowing just a couple of singles, seven shutout innings, which, by the way, going seven innings on opening night, that's a story in and of itself yeah. right there. But the, the performance that he had after kind of, I don't know if pressure is the right word, but after all that we talked about him and his possible role in the team coming into this season, not making the postseason roster during the postseason last year, the, the moment was definitely not too big for him on Friday night. And you can kind of see the emotion coming out. You knew that he was he was going to play a role this season, possibly starting 
from that first Friday game, and he had me pumped up. I like the body language that I saw from Blake Money. He was pumping his fist. He was pounding his chest. He's going to see better competition, and he's still going to have some things to prove. But what a great start for Blake Money, who's going to be so important to the LSU baseball team this season. It was it was very similar to what we just talked about with Kay Doty. You heard a lot of hype about Blake Money this offseason, and he ends up, you know, whether it be the weight loss or just the what he how well he was pitching in the scrimmages, and you saw it all in front of your eyes. You saw it live up to the hype. The seven innings is one thing. What's better than that? He did it in under 80 pitches. He was wildly efficient. He mixed the slider and the fastball well, just pounded the strike zone, ends up with 10 Ks. And after the first inning, when he struck out two of the three he faced and just looked incredibly dominant doing it, overpowering. As a matter of fact, I tweeted out, just in jest, over opening day overreaction, Blake Money, SEC Pitcher of the Year. And then as the night went on, it's like, well... Well, it's still in jest, but perhaps, you know, it's one game, but perhaps what he did do in that one game is he showed you that, as you said, the competition will get better and it'll be tougher, but until he proves he's not worthy, he solved your Friday night problem. Until he gives you a reason otherwise, Blake Money's your Friday night starter. That's ultimately what you were hoping for and you got it. He was, he was great. Yeah, and that tweet aged well, at least for the moment, as, the moment, as you said, as the night went on. And as far as LSU's other pitchers over the weekend, Javen Coleman got the win on Saturday, limited Maine to one run on one hit in three innings. I thought he looked pretty solid. Then Mikhail Hilliard worked the first four innings, charged with five runs, three earned on four hits, one walk and two strikeouts. I've heard a lot of people say how, how good he's looked coming into the season. I was a little surprised to see him struggle the way he did, but they do have to play better behind him. You were saying before the show that LSU was making too many losing plays behind Mikhail Hilliard. Yeah, it, and it, look, Maine's not good enough to take advantage of him, so it didn't matter. Mikhail was in the strike zone plenty in that game. He didn't walk anybody. He did hit two guys, but other than that, I mean, didn't walk anyone. They only... They weren't hitting the ball hard off of him. You just had to make plays. When he got in trouble is when leadoff hitters reached. And I mean, that's kind of what happens to any pitcher, right? I mean, you always hear the stat, the leadoff guy reaches however many percentage of the time. The percentage changes literally every time somebody brings up that stat. But um, it, you just you have to be able to make plays behind Hilliard. I like him still in this rotation for this team for that reason. I think the defense will sure up behind him just fine. It did last year, and LSU was not a very good defensive team last year. Uh, and Mikhail can give up some runs here or there, and this offense can back him up. So I, I, I don't, I don't hate that uh, for for Mikhail Hilliard. I, I would expect him to get another start this week. They have four games this week, so they have to have somebody start him. Uh, excuse me, four games this weekend, five in total in the week, so they have to have somebody start him. And I think Mikhail Hilliard gets another shot at it, and I, I think he's gonna be pretty good. Midweek, baby, got to be excited. Midweek games finally start. Lot tech, man. That's and, gonna be that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a tough one up there in uh, Love Shack at Ruston on yes, Wednesday. Yes, yes. We'll talk about that game leading in. But speaking of being excited, pretty excited with Ty Floyd's performance on Sunday as well. Thought he played pretty well. Earned his first win of the season, five innings, giving up one run on two hits. Also a career best eight strikeouts in his season's debut. I, I thought he was pretty dominant and kind of made a statement as LSU tries to round out its weekend rotation. Floyd was dominant, man. Earned another start, in my opinion. Uh, just overpowered, man, especially with the fastball. It's just kind of going to be the same thing for me with, with Ty Floyd. I, I think he's very good. I do just want to see a little bit more of the of the secondary stuff. He didn't need it on Sunday, obviously. I mean, they, they couldn't touch the fastball. It was, it was phenomenal. But uh, going forward, like I said, I think he's earned another start. He was great. Just maybe can we mix it in a little bit. With as much as they were throwing it, in preseason or, or in the uh, fall, I expected to see it a little bit more, but he was just going so good with the fastball, there was no reason. Uh, if he's going to stay in that rotation, there there will eventually be reason for that, and when that time comes, can he can he reach that level of consistency? If he can, he can be dominant. I mean, I've used the comp of, of Alex Lang his freshman year at LSU, had the, the curveball and the, the fastball, and they were both plus pitches, and he was able to ride that to a 15-0 record as a true freshman. It was the next year when... The scouting report was out there that it, that he struggled a little bit, and then when he developed the change up uh, in the in the further developed the thing, change up in the third year, he was you know back to a double digit win guy. I think Floyd can be the same way if they get just a little bit more consistency, much like Blake Money was. We mentioned Money didn't even really flash a change up at all. It was the slider and fastball. He didn't need it. So uh, kind of the same vein for Floyd. They were dominant and loved it. Thought the bullpen was great too. I know we're coming up come, coming late here uh, in the, in this segment, but. Razelman, Eric Razelman's going to hit 102 miles an hour on that juiced gun in Hoover. That thing is totally false. And if he's hitting 99 in February at the box, uh, he's going to break the gun in Hoover. And he didn't even have to flash his slider, which is a put-away pitch. Thought Fontenot 
was very, very good. If you have Raiselman and Fontenot at the back end of your bullpen, you're going to win a lot of baseball games when you look to go close them out. Paul Gervais, 6'10", throwing 95, good luck. Yeah. I mean, good luck. Yeah, you're going to see better competition again when it comes to the pitching, but given the context of what happened this weekend, I thought most everybody looked good, and the offense looked great. Everybody, as you ran through all the stats, all those guys hitting 400, some guys hitting 500. All things considered, regardless of the competition, it was about as good of an opening weekend for yeah. LSU as I thought it could have been.